How's it guys? Welcome back to the channel. We've got an interesting topic today. Um, I hope you guys are all surviving during the lockdown period and keeping yourselves busy. That's the best way to fight the lockdown period. Keep yourself busy doing things, especially if you're in the 3D printing game. It's a great time to be, to be 3D printing and to be working on your projects. So you can now have the time to complete your projects. Today I've got a little interesting topic for you. Uh, my wife has got these, this key to her drawers next to her uh, desk in her office and uh, she reversed the chair into it and broke off the top. So it's very difficult for her to store this in her handbag and uh, to find it again. So she asked me if I could 3D print a, um, a new case or whatever you want to call it for the key. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to share this with you and show you what we can do with 3D printing. So I'm going to take you through this little Fusion 360 course on how to make um, the end for this key. And let's print this off and let's see how it looks. So let's get started. So the first thing I suggest you do is take a really good photograph of the key. Um, I took a piece of paper, white paper, and I took a, a photograph directly from above so that we don't have any angles or shadows and we have a very accurate um, depiction of your key that you're trying to make. So let's do that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a canvas. I'm going to get it from my computer and I've cropped it down already and got it sort of in place. It asks us what plane we would like to put it on. So let's just put it onto that plane and say, okay, now I'm going to click on top. And if we look at here, we've got a depiction of the key that we can now work with. Now, uh, Fusion 360 has got a really awesome feature. If you measure across the key, so I'm going to measure across the key here, and I'm getting 12.6 across my key. So now what we can do is we can calibrate this image to the size that is in sort of a real depiction of what the size of the key is. So let's do that. So under canvases, you right click on key and you click, click on calibrate. I'm going to zoom right in here, try to get past all the, um, the shadows and all that. So I'm going to click on there. So from that point, and then I'm going to zoom out a bit, go across, let's zoom in, and by the look of it, um, that's a shadow, so it's about there, and I'm going to put that in as, as uh, 12.6, press enter. Now the image is, is calibrated to the correct size of the, uh, of the key. So whatever designs and whatever work we do around this now will be calibrated to the size of the key. I think this is really cool. You can use this in so many different instances. Like I saw one where you take a photograph of a cupboard and you want to make a handle for that cupboard. You take a photograph, you measure the width of the cupboard and you calibrate it. Where your holes are, you can put your model directly on top of that and your model will be the correct size. It's a great feature in Fusion 360 and extremely powerful because it allows you to, uh, to literally trace your object. And that's what we're going to do right now. So, right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the inside where the key is going to go in. So we're going to make the piece where uh, it'll be cut out. So let's go and do that. We're going to have a bit of a gap. So I'm going to make this key about six millimeters high. This is zero, uh, sorry, 1.9 millimeters. Uh, approximately, yeah, 1.9 millimeters uh, thick. So I'm going to make my uh, plane where I start the bottom of the key at 2.05. So to do that, I go to the construct and I go to the offset pane. I say I want to offset this pane and I want to move it 2.05 up. Now the plane is set to that. If I go and look at the plane, you'll see that it's floating in midair, which is exactly what we want. Create a sketch on this new plane that we created, right? This point here. So I'll create a line and we can then just draw down to as close as possible. Right, and then we can get out. What I'll do is I'll show you a little trick now now where you can now um, shortly where you can make sure that your measurements are correct. So I'm just tracing around here, getting my points in. Looks like I'm a little bit out there. Ah, right, there's our sketch. 
Now, another thing with Fusion 360 is if you make a mistake with your sketch, you can always edit it and it will edit the instructions throughout the whole model. So this really is a cool feature. I'm just gonna round the edges here just a little bit, just to make it a little bit of a, of a cleanup fit. So I'm just rounding the edges. That's it. There we go. So let's finish up at that. Right. Now that we've got our sketch, we can now click on it and we can extrude it. I'm going to check my height again. 1 1.9, 1.88. So I'm going to round that up to 1.9. We want a little bit of, of a gap, just a little bit. So I'm going to make that 1.9. And there we go. So let's go have a look at the, how that is looking. Right, so you can see that is now floating in mid-air there, exactly where we want it. I'm really happy with that. Okay, let's go back to our top. Right, now, I am now I'm going to create a new component. Um, and I'm going to draw a new sketch on the same, on the, on the old plane. Right, so we want that onto the bottom plane. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Make it 22 by 22. 22 by 22. Press OK. Let's just make sure that we're on the right plane. Yes, we are. OK, so we're on the bottom plane. Select this and extrude it to six millimeters. I want to make my handle six millimeters thick. And there we go. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Now let's uh, click on fill it so that we can make it look a little bit neater and nicer on the hands. And let's just select all the corners. You can do this one at a time, but might as well do it all together. So I'm just going to go select every single corner. Always forget to hold down the control. Right. And there's that. And let's push that in by, uh, yeah, let's get two mils. That's nice and neat. And it also goes right up to there. That's nice. I like that. Okay, so let's make that two mils. Click OK. So there we have that now. Now we get to the fun part uh, where we can click on this body, right? And then we can say modify and we can say combine. And I want to connect it with this body, with this body, this being the tool. So that's my target body, the top one, and then the bottom one being the tool. And we're going to select cut. And there we go. Bang. Just like that. We've now got our cut inside our key. So we've got our hole that we wanted. What I would like to do quickly is just go and confirm that the sizes are correct. So I'm going to go back to my original sketch here. Right. I'm going to go to the inspect. Let's hide that component away. Edit sketch right now. Um, I'm going to click on inspect. And let's go from that plane to that plane. Or what does it measure? 12.751. Let's be a bit careful here. You don't want it to be too loose. So I've got a 12.5, 12 12.6, 12. 12. actually no, 12.6 was what my original measurement was. Uh, now I want to build in a little bit of a buffer, but not too much. Click on move, move it just a little bit in. Okay, so I moved it in 0.1 of a millimeter. I just want to inspect again and see how tight we are 12.65 I think that's a nice gap you want a nice gap uh, that allows for uh, for it to have a little bit of it, it just clicks in a lot easier so you don't have to force it in 4.5 so now I'm just going to do a little rough check on this and see make sure that this has got enough clearance 
actually appears not to have. So what I want to do is just make sure that I've got enough space for this. So I'm going to take this line here, and I'm going to edit it, I'm going to move it, and I'm just going to move it down just a little bit. 0 0.05, so we move it down a little bit more. And there we go. So if we inspect again, from there to there, 4.6. Yeah, I think that's that's good. That'll be a good, that's a good gap. I'm going to move it a little bit more. So go there, click on that, and click on minus 0 0.1. We don't want to move it too far. All right, there we go. Okay, finish sketch. And what happens is that the body, the original body, uh, will have been modified. Okay, there we go. Let's export this now. So I'm going to go to this body. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save it as an STL. Right, that will now export it to um, our file and let's give it a key handle. Key handle. And there we go. Now we can go to Cura and we can open that model up. So let's open up that model. There it is. And there it is, ready to go. Now, before we start printing, we need to now pause the print at a specific layer so that we can pop the key in. So let's go have a, let's slice this. All right, and then 14 minutes is a quick um, print let's go into preview mode and let's go look so as we go down we can see where uh, the print there so layer 20 so layer 20 is where we want to stop so to put the pause command in we go to extensions we go to post processing and modify g-code we click on add script and we look for pause at height we're going to use the stra standard pause at height setting we want to pause it at layer number, not the height. So whatever layer we want to pause it at. And we're going to say, we're going to pause you at layer 20. Okay, that's it. We're done with that, close. So if we slice this now, it'll put in that uh, pause into the G code. At layer 20, it'll stop here. And then layer 21, uh, it will cover it up. I'm going to print with Octoprint uh, because I love using Octoprint. So I don't have the standard motherboard in here, so I don't have an SD card. I put it in an MKS Gen L board, which is a silent driver. And man, does that make a huge difference on the on the printing, on the, the how loud the printing is. So I'm going to do everything from Octoprint. Um, I will, if you're interested, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a, a tutorial on how to do Octoprint. Uh, so we can install Octoprint and now I'm going to print to Octoprint. So I've sent it to Octoprint and away it goes and I'll come back to you when we get to our pause spot. Right, now that it's paused, we can pop in our key. So let's just do that quickly. Be careful and make sure that you don't dislodge the print. So do this very carefully. What a beautiful, snug, tight print. Oh, man, I'm so pleased with that. So now let's press resume. And it will continue, we'll uh, reheat up the head and continue to make the print. We'll return shortly once that is done. And there we go, all done. It is now beautifully encapsulated. It is strong. It will hold this key forever. And uh, there we go. This is a nice idea if you ever want to um, color code your keys. You can break off the original plastic and print specific colors for your color code. You can put a key ring hole through here in your design on Fusion 360. There are so many opportunities and options that you can do with this. And using Fusion 360 with the drawing is just absolutely amazing where you can put the, the, the picture on, calibrate it, and then resize it to exactly the size you want. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, check out our channel for more videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, consider supporting us on Patreon and give us a like if you like this video. Also, let me know if you want to see anything else in the comments below. We're really trying to build this channel up. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks to the people who have subscribed. Subscribe, please, guys. I, I see that 78% of my viewers have not subscribed. That's it, guys. See you soon. God bless. Stay safe during this time. Cheers.